This series of tapes, Psychology vs. Theology, were recorded from classes given this year by the Supreme Grand Master, Dr. Malachi Z. York, known to us as Naya, Malachi Zadok El, our own pharaoh, Amanubi Rakata. These tapes were released in part so that you may listen and learn the profound facts as taught by the man of this hour. And now, listen to the dynamic teachings of the Supreme Grand Master, Naya, Malachi Zodak El.
You with me? So they knew they were saying, now what would be, what would be his end when Greek, of course, is Angelo, Ibu, Melek, or Malaika, in ancient Egypt, is Zetaru, amongst the Hopi, is Sakina, amongst the Nigerians, is Shuri. We always had names for beings that came from the star, or beyond the star. In ancient Egypt, Solstice was the star, uh, uh, what they call the Sirius star constellation, the Dogon tribe of bees. And so now, what would they be doing by planting this angelic belief other than to plan in your mind a group of beings that come from beyond the star. You with me? Along with that, they planted in Switzerland a guy named Billy Myers. I'm not saying they put him there. <laughs> the thought, I mean, it's caught. And he spoke about a Platean group. So when the UFO thing hit, it didn't have room for racism. Because <laughs> everybody was worried about little brains. And he wasn't particularly worried about little brains getting jobs driving buses. <laughs> <laughs> there was no racism involved in the first fair because everybody was a target. So what the racists of the world had to do is they had to introduce into it the Platians and say there's a Nordic. And every time you hear the word Nordic, you're hearing Europe. A Nordic race of superior beings, tall, blonde hair, blue eyes, who came from out the barrier. The problem, that entered into the racial problem. And then of course, the, and this happened back in Hitler's time. Therefore, the Nubians started saying, well, no, they're not white, they must be. So the, 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 the original demons got their separation tactics going in, in a phenomena that they were planning so that they can justify what the first thing as black money. Black money was so they can get involved in high-tech projects without involving you because they had lost too many wars. And, and the tactics of going to Hiroshima and dropping bombs just did not sit with people right. So they had to come to a more sophisticated method of winning wars. And that was working on time machines in the Philadelphia, uh, experimenting with disappearing uh, crafts or radar invasions in the uh, Philadelphia incident. And then in the Montauk project, they did with time machines. And you know, they started moving to another game. It became mental. So the government admits that they have people that deal with psychics because they can show us that in the 70s and the 60s on television how the Russians had people moving needles and had Yuri Gali was bending spoons and they were introducing the paranormal into our minds. That, that people have psychic power, they can move metal and levitate things. So they opened the doors in the 60s and every swarmy pit pit you can think of from India <laughs> came running into the United States, sitting in Nazis, humming, 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 and everybody dropping out of college and not going to the military and sitting around with swarmy this and swarmy this and swoopy this and all these guys, these poor Indians, are winning the emotions of the people on this transcendental meditation. So the government put together an organization that says that they do remote viewing. Simple word means we look at things at a distance. Very simple. And they said, so they found the best psychics in the country and put together a team of remote viewers. I'll get back to Hellbop, so you see what I'm saying. So now, once they introduced the Hellbop project, and they say behind is this massive thing that we don't know what it is, the first thing that goes to mind after all the grooming is, it's a UFO. Oh. Now, a man named Dr. Ryan Titchen, a Russian Jew, who was fluent in Kuni and many other languages, he called it Nibiru, because that's what was in the tablet of the Inuma Elish. Nibiru. Something that, it means, crosses the... Start, put, start work with me here, and start to put the pieces together. You know what you're saying? <laughs> All right. There in Zacharias Sitchin's Stich book, he tells you that these beings were the Nathanians of the Bible, Tanakh, the Torah, Genesis 6, that originally cloned the first humans on earth, Lulu, Amu, <laughs> Adam and Eve, Jephthah, and that they were going to leave and 3,600 years distance home and 3,600 distance back would be about 6,000 years. And they're coming back to do what? To get their children. Now, Christianity, in time, has interpreted this as the Muslims say the Mahdi is coming. The Jews say the Meshach or the Messiah is coming. The Buddha say Buddha is coming or Messiah is coming. And everybody now has gotten this thought planted in their mind too. So that's to expect some supernatural incident where some beings who were here a long time ago who created you left 
and I'm coming back to get you. You understand? <laughs> so now back to Hellbach. So when the Hellbach incident comes, all the people that belong to the 60s that had made the, the hippie transition <laughs> was walking around saying peace and love and the whole world was in a beautiful uh, state because we take taking LSD and <laughs> everybody was smoking on cloud nine and listening to all these swamis about all of the transcendental meditation, these minds are right for the picture. You with me? Yeah. They're right. So when the 60s spirit died, back in the 60s, some groups then started committing suicide. Uh, because they were disappointed. Uh, so Jim Jones took a group of people and with the help of the government, who really did the execution, by the way, they eliminated those people and made it look like a perfect because they were having a cult war in this country. They started this thing called cult buses. The cult buses were really brought to the country out of Christian churches in order to get these swamis and these Muslims and all these fanatical Eastern religions out of here that did not sit straight with the American system that we live in. No, 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 no shirts and ties, no gray suits, no attaché cases, no more riding on the subway. You know, come on, no more eating meat, no more drinking alcohol, no more smoking drugs and about and there was big money in all that. There was big money in silk suits and us buying Italian loafers and alligator shoes and our pack of sweaters. There was a lot of money there. There was big money in processes and terms for whites and blacks. But don't fool yourself, Caucasians also turn their hair. So everybody, there was money there. If all there was money in the transcendental thing, right? Because they started selling them yeah, I always call those things, uh, Hattie Christian outfits and Hattie Christian But the government couldn't get his hands on it because it fell under religion, separated from state. So they turned around and looked at the Christians and said, you people have to do something about these foreign invasions, aliens. What's the difference between an alien from another planet or an Indian who comes in without a green card who's also referred to as an alien? <laughs> So on the book, Alien is Alien. You understand me? I just wanted to get this piece. So you see, but that's just one of them games they play every 10 years to try to stop the possibility of Earth people coming together and starting to respect each other as human beings. They have to keep this place set in a way with the past system. You follow that? Where certain people are kept low enough and their intelligence is exploited for fear of dominance. So they say the black Muslims preach black supremacy. But the KKK teaches racial segregation. You know what I mean? The skinheads preach racial separation, but the evil Israelites preach black supremacy. Black are supreme. This, of course, stirs hate. Right. He ain't no better than me. Right. Me and you got his blood, his blood, skin, his skin. That's the game. Back to hell about. So, right. with the hell about situation, the first thing that's established in everybody's mind is UFO behind hell about. Now they know that hell about is going to be seen by anybody who wants to look up and see it. Right. So the hell about itself will be a confirmation of the possibilities of anything else said about it. You understand what I mean? Make it more believable. When, let's say, Elijah Muhammad said there was a mother plane in the sky, built a long time ago by scientists, right? Now, hell about people there say, maybe that's the mothership. mothership. You see the game? The psychological thing. Now we got a whole upsurge of energy for those people who are looking for a savior. Now the Christians can't get a part of this. <laughs> because their star has already come. <laughs> you follow that? So now we're, we're in our next move. All of the leftover entities form all these new extraterrestrial groups. They showed you that group on Independence Day. Climb up to the top of the room <laughs> and wave the extraterrestrials, as they call them, come take us. And they did. They took off. <laughs> <laughs> they shot them and killed those people. You know what I mean? So they introduced to you hell, Bob. They make it public. They introduced to you simultaneously angels. There's a Christian revival. There's a religious surge. There's a cultural surge going on again from the 60s. 
and make the atmosphere right for fanatics to step in and do things like that. And then they know that, because when they do that, then they turn to people and say, what about your guys? Y'all wear black. What about y'all? Y'all are a cult. They, everybody, everybody is a cult. The word cult is short for cult. Everybody, the Pope is a cult. The Pope cult met this morning at sunrise, like the brother said, and had a sunrise visual for Easter. A sunrise visual. Christians went out and watched the sun come up for Easter. Now, that ain't sun worship, cult worship, but he's a Pope, so he's good. They don't ask him, is he a, is he a cult? But they're afraid that somebody like you might know what that crowd is if it's a crowd. But they don't know. And then they put their remote viewers on it, and they're looking to keep a job. <laughs> so they start making up all kinds of, oh yeah, the living entity, oh yeah. And even went as far as saying, it's coming here to get a certain group of people. Not only that, selected people, and extra intelligent people. It make that, that makes it real easy for me to want to be a part of it. Because it seems like it's addressing me. If I think I'm so intelligent. Because I said, this here class is coming just for pretty people. <laughs> 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 Who's going to tell the ugly people now? <laughs>
No school means no new sneakers. Because these kids are trained to go to school and trained to try to look nice in school and trained to try to look better than each other in school. So kids will say, I don't want to go to school because I don't have anything to wear. Commerce involved. Pencils. Pencils are disappearing. Where is the largest shipment of lead coming from? Here. All the lead in the slate is coming from, see, your country is broken up into four places. Get this in your mind. Northern part of this country, right, deals with industry, cars, Wall Street, you know, factories. Southern top part of this country deals with farming, textile is farming, but the cotton, you know, sheep. The East Coast, Deals with import, because everything was shipped. Read Revelation 18 if you'll read. And then on the west coast, you're dealing with minerals. As you go west, you're dealing with gold and the oil. And so the country has been strategically broken down into a compass of business. And the Civil War was fought because the people in the south would not do trade with the people in the north. And the people in the north were depending on the food from the farmers. And they had this farmer's war or confederate war less than 10 years ago. Where the government came in and gave loans to all the farmers. And then when they brought, when the farmers went out and bought new equipment and planted food, the government didn't buy it. The north didn't buy it. So it's industry again. UFOs is industry. If all that grays are industry, they're now making gray masses and gray t-shirts. Whenever you see t-shirts and grays all over them, there's money involved. And to make it real, they've got to have life and death. Life and death is real. Everybody recognizes those two principles. The fact that you're living and one day you'll die, or that someone you love was living and one day you'll die. So this death incident has woken up everybody to the UFO. Phenomenal. It's not an accident. It's well planned. It's to make people come here and say, let me go on out there because I heard that he teaches about UFOs. Let me get high, okay? I heard that he teaches about UFOs and that the bear with the crap in the sky is coming to get them. And that People are joining this organization faster than any organization we have ever seen. They're not joining the organization because they like me. They're not all, they're joining the organization because they have investigated the things I say. So the principles of this organization, the principles of my organization and your organization was don't believe me. Don't trust me. That's what all I'll need to see. Believe what I say. Don't believe me. So when we talked maybe four or five years before the incident of Hellbox, not calling it Hellbox, but Nibiru, nothing new, something recorded in the Enuma Elish, that it would come back, NASA knows about it, called the planet X, got it on record. They've been recording it for the longest. But they know. They know of an ancient prophecy. The Mexican had it recently. Their prophecy came true. And crafts were recorded for Mexico on film, and they cannot, the government cannot say these are other than metallic crafts. So they write them away, and they can't let Mexico merge, so they create a new problem with Mexico and drugs, close the gates down, block the propaganda, your undesirable and extraterrestrial information coming through from the ancient Almax that the Mexicans are receiving, you won't get. <laughs> Women? Yeah. They know about the Dogon tribe. They've been knowing about the Dogon tribe before you did. And they know the Dogon tribe speak about a star called Cyrus. Or a Cirrus star sign, or solstice as we call it. And it's at one of the points off of the belt of the three stars of Orion. Uh, they were trying to relate the Dogon to the Orion star constellation of Egypt. Then they found out that the Dogon migrated from Egypt to Mali. 
And he found out that the spirit star was called Isis. And that the Orion Belt was the three pyramids of Khufu. Mm -hmm. And that the planet alignment takes place every 6,000 years. They know about the 26,000 year for the axis needle shift. They know about the equinox and the epoch, 50,000 years for the plus shift. They know about the seven inner planets lining up. Don't come out here and say, I wrote the book, uh, 5, 5, 2000. Now I didn't write the book. Fine, seek out the men. Go slap hell by the side of the head. <laughs> We're not controlling the propaganda. Because when you say stuff in a fanatical society, a liberal society like America, you gotta be careful how you word things. Because there are crazy people here. And if you're a responsible leader, you must be careful what you say. Yes, we're an organization that recognizes the ancient ones. But we don't just say the ancient ones are coming from beyond the stars. We say the ancient ones are also beneath us. The all Max, the Mayans, the Aztecs, that's our people. The indigenous people of this land. The, problem, the racial problem comes in with economics. Creating separate markets. Regardless of what the result is between human beings, if I can get all the white people to like one kind of music, and all the black people to like another kind of music, and all the red people to like another kind of music, separate diets, I have created three separate markets. That's why I told y'all that they are going to change the music soon. That's why they're giving all the awards to people like Babyface and Tony Braxton, who don't, who's not wearing baggy clothes. Simple economics says, if everybody is buying extra large clothes, then I'm losing money. Because if I, listen close, I'm not as crazy as I look. <laughs> if I can sell you, uh, what size shirt do you wear? Extra large. Extra large. What size shirt do you wear? Large. Large. So the, there's less fabric going into his shirt than in his shirt. Now if I can get somebody here with a medium, and then a small, you know what I'm saying? I can calculate mathematically the amount of yardage through my profits based on his extra large to his large to so and so's medium, but charge all of them the same price. I charge the extra large price, but I save two or three yards of fabric as the sizes go down. So when the kids started buying all extra large clothes, thanks to, um, Crisscross. <laughs> oh boy, and them backwards pants really frightened them. <laughs> because there's money in the metal in the zipper, and men, we men know plastic zippers don't work. <laughs> they don't work. Many women right now, oh yeah, y'all do too, y'all be doing this. <laughs> it didn't work, the plastic zipper didn't work. So now to shift the fans now, the possibility of taking that metal out that zipper, how much, how many billions of dollars would have been lost every year just by removing the zipper? See, so Muslims come in the country and they put on uh, jellabiers and pants and having clothes and tie them up and no zip it. And the metal industry is here. And they go, look at those Muslim guys in those clothes, there's no money in that. <laughs> what do Muslims use that got metal in it? So the, so, this may sound crazy to y'all, but we are talking about billions of dollars a year. And if you don't realize it's all based on money, but I'm talking commerce versus commercialism versus brainwashing versus subliminal seduction versus suicide. Which bring that stuff about. Didn't you know this that everybody had on Nike? Yeah. <laughs> everybody committed suicide had on Nike. Premeditated suicide, premeditated suicide and we all go buy the most expensive shoe we can find? If you want to go and commit suicide, you can buy a fall from Walmart on Walmart. So they intended to commit suicide with eighty something dollars niggas on. <laughs> they pre-planned it. Someone stuck in a Nike commercial. <laughs> Someone saw the opportunity to stick in a Nike commercial. Why mention? Why even bother? So now in the division, we have, let's say, in white music, right? 
They got Marshall guitars and they got <laughs> Marshall amplifiers, I'm sorry, and they got certain instruments that they play, and their kids wear a certain kind of dress, and they go to a certain kind of club, and they do a certain type of dances, and they move different than we do. No doubt about it, right? And now this is a, a market. Over here, there is a black market. Yeah. Over here is a Latino market. More grass section, more conero, more a different type of dress, a different type of dance. It's a separate market. I'm telling you, man, this is deep stuff they play. This is, this, you know, it's all this manipulation. What's happening now? I'm saying what's happening. The age of awareness, awareness is lining up with the age of Aquarius. And people are becoming simple again. You know what I'm saying? People are saying, well, I don't eat that no more. Yeah. McDonald's and them ain't giving away toys because they're burgers or selling. And my burgers don't, I ain't got to give you a toy. I'm giving you a bonus just like the bank and the car deal because I'm trying to lure you in because I'm not making the kind of money I used to. But people no longer believe in McDonald's. People are starting to get healthy. People are starting to charge. And we don't manufacture sneakers. Because we don't produce enough gum Arabic in this country, so that it's coming from the Far East. Look at all the sneakers everybody got on. And where the sneakers ain't their shoes got rubber soles. Leather was one of our markets. Why? Because we had the cattle. But not sneakers. You got to get the message? You understand the baggy, the baggy clothes syndrome? So they got to get baby face because he wears suits. Yeah. They got to get Tony Braxton because she's wearing slim clothes. They even picked out with Houston, dumped her off, and she was gone. Cleaned her up and put her back in. They put, <laughs> oh yeah, that's how they work. They don't care. They put, they put Rod Stewart, but back to he's about 100 years old. And Mick Jagger is about 150 years old. And David Bowie is 250 years old. And they brought them back because it creates a... They need y'all to get back into fitting clothes. They need y'all to get back into shoes. They need y'all to get back into jewelry and hair perms. They need y'all to get back to restaurants and evenings and going to the movies. Remember one time when videos came in, all the movie theaters were complaining because people were staying home and taking them. Yeah. Right now there's about 30 new comedies out. People are going out to the movies again. Going out to the movies means going back to restaurants. Going back to restaurants. <laughs> all economics. Crime is economics. Yeah. Why is crime economics? Because the police force represents economics. He got a wooden stick, rubber shoe, a leather belt, a cotton uniform, a steel gun, an iron buckle, a copper strap. <laughs> he is, he is, when you see him in a uniform, a policeman, a uniform, next time, step back into this. <laughs> and look at, the, look at the amount of money they're calling this one guy. He carries over 20 pounds to 20 to 50 pounds of weight and is expected to catch a young black boy running through the ghetto in secret. He has something for that too. No, he could not catch you, so what he did is wear the style where you untied your shoes and let down your pants so he could catch you. But when I was coming up, we didn't get caught. <laughs> if we got a chance to run, and how many people were in this 40s and 50s? Right, know that. If we got a chance to run, it wasn't about catching us. <laughs> if we got a chance to run in our neighborhood, it really wasn't about catching <laughs> These young boys, you see them every time you pass up against the wall. <laughs> Why do you look? The pants are not in. <laughs> Read about her. It's an icy thing. 
the elimination process. Now we're at a point in time that they come in, it's like they, they can't stop drugs from coming in this country, right? right? Or better yet, Mexicans can't get in the country, but Arabs can get in here and blow stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> Mexicans only got to cross the border, and Arabs got to cross the water. <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of people turning the and looking the other way. You know what they tell me? Go back to the hellbox. Don't believe the hell. All that is a setup and it might even get worse. Why? Because of things like the waffle. And if you think, if you think for one minute, I'm teaching you that we're getting out of America to go to Africa. You don't belong here. Because <laughs> I've traveled all over Africa. I've lived in Africa. I've lived in Africa. I'm an African. And most Africans are trying to get over here. <laughs> Let's not be no fools. It was a beautiful place. It was. But it's no more. Leadership. Power. Cool. That's like greed. Ego. Ego. What do you think is going on in Zaya right now? It's all over ego. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist here. But at least here they say, give me a portion of your money called tax. And I'll protect you. And stay in a certain guideline. And I'll protect you. This is nothing that they, this is not something that they volunteer to do. This is something that they have to do. Because you're the ancient one. And this is recorded right here in the government that they want to protect you. Because this is really your land. And they know it. I'm not going to go into that. That starts another whole chapter of our life. But again, the hell up. Don't come at us. So, do y'all know these guys? <laughs> no, I don't know these people. Are they just in the ghetto? I might have met them. <laughs> Are these people picked the richest neighborhood, the richest neighborhood in California to die in? I would have got stopped walking through that neighborhood. <laughs> they said, well, there's a couple of Negro people with them. Yeah, yeah that was your Horace brother from Star Trek, and he got money, he can walk through the neighborhood, but they go, well, you, 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 you're her brother. Go ahead. Who are you? I'm Dr. Miller York. You can't go through the neighborhood. Because you're going in there to steal. <laughs> <laughs> this is assumed. If you run through the streets of California, you will get arrested. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now, here we got, let's, let's, let's touch another subject there. Here we got a group of, let's say, what they say, 39 of them? Yeah. Let's just say it was only 39, it's hard to believe, right? Yeah. 39 people moved in one of the richest neighborhoods in California, all dressed in black, all wearing Nike. You can see the leader's marbles are scrambled just by his, his face. Yeah. Ah, he, looks, he almost looks exactly like DuPont. Yeah. And you can see that, his, that someone put a hole in his marble bag and they fell out. <laughs> you can see the man. You can see the man ain't all there. Yeah. And now this group walked around an exclusive neighborhood and nobody knew nothing about it. And no investigation was done. Not even the neighborhood sheriff saw of that kind of... They said, well, uh, you know, they came to our restaurant just four days before they died. They all came in and they were so polite and they were nice. And I never knew they were going to die. You ever think maybe they didn't need them? <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't wear the world. Look, if I said to y'all, listen. <laughs> hey, give me, give me the benefit of doubt. Please, please let me make a fool out of myself first before you die. Listen, everybody. It's time for us to commit suicide. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, yeah. Aren't you ready? No. Somebody needs to tell the government a little more about black people. <laughs> because if they would have really watched the Rodney King tape, they would have knew how bad he wanted to look. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 